Welcome back, folks, here on the Believe in FCS Football podcast. I'm Joe DeLeon, joined by my former teammate, former roommate at the University of Rhode Island, Mr. Sean Anderson. And this week, it is officially FCS National Championship Week coming up on Saturday. And we are going to be breaking up these two episodes into a Montana State preview and then a North Dakota State preview. Sean, you, you seem to be in a chipper mood today. How are you doing? Um, well, I know we got some other listeners out here in uh, the Virginia area, East Coast, um, Beast Coast, rather. Uh, so they are going through what I am going through right now, which is about <laughs> eight inches of snow just planted right on the right on the ground and on the cars. And then you're digging around the car to make sure you can get out because the car that I drive does not have all wheel drive. And it's just kind of a uh, it's a why would you buy a non all wheel drive car it's like a sports in the car so it's it's not it's 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 not good in the snow so i had to take a lot of really tough so precautions. it's useless so oh it's your car's really great in the snow right what oh uh, it snows a lot in los angeles you had it in new jersey also i did i'd like to make a note of that how did it perform uh probably better than yours did i doubt it i i concur or your i car disagree. is very your car is very light in the ass my car's heavy you gotta admit that yeah, that's a problem. It's not a problem. It's bad in the snow. No, heavy is better in the snow. Oh, I don't know anything about cars. Um, but what I do know about, Sean, we've got two very good teams that have made it this far. We've gotten past our, our little break of uh, time off for Christmas, time off for New Year's, and I, I'm ready to get back to the normal swing of things. I'm ready to talk FCS football, and then we've got a lot of stuff coming up in the offseason that we'll probably hit on after next week um but sean today we're going to be doing montana state first and then north dakota state is going to be second before we get to this discussion on montana state can you share with our listeners a word from our sponsor i'd love to i took a beating uh this weekend Yikes. and it is what it is though but you know when i didn't take a beating is knowing that kyler murray and the cardinals were going to beat dallas and that was a big makeup bet for me and then you know how you can only do that joe you can only do that if you keep on going, and that's what that's what I do. I keep on going. Some people say, "Oh, why don't you just stop and take your losses?" I say, "Well, I'm looking at how much is in my account. I can sit here and do that, or I, I can just why not flush it and put it on the Cardinal?" That's what <laughs> I did, and uh, maybe I made that back a little bit. And I do that at Bet Online, and uh, you can go to Bet Online. Dot ag and use the promo code believe to re receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposits just use the promo code believe b-l-e-a-v to receive your bonus and if betting on football isn't what you want to do if you're say a, b a bigger hockey fan you're a bigger basketball fan uh ufc fan whatever it is they have it all they have vegas casino games on the website so don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the upcoming year. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing new offers available. Bet online where the game starts. All right. Thank you, Sean. So the way that we're going to go about this, talking about both these teams, I want, I want to break it down from a 50 foot view, talking about what maybe outside viewers should be aware of what North Dakota state fans looking at Montana state should be aware of. And to open up the discussion, I, I think that if we're talking about what makes what the identity of this team is, what the strengths are, it is an attacking defense led by one of the most elite athletes at the FCS level in Troy Anderson. And then they have an aggressive rushing attack that is proved without Isaiah Fonze, who we don't know for sure if he's going to be available in this game. And I know for a goddamn fact, I'm going to mispronounce uh, Mellet's name wrong again, I but think you got it. Did I get it right? I think you I've, been, it. I've been saying Mellet this whole time, whatever Tommy Mellet has stepped in and really proven to us that he can take over a game running the football. And he didn't get a whole lot of help against South Dakota state and he didn't need any help. And if they have a available, Mm -hmm. for this matchup against North Dakota State. Those are the two big things for me, running the football and then a, a, a very, very, very talented defense. Yeah, those are obviously they're, they're the linchpins of that team. Uh, and I'll say this. Um, you could try to keep selling me on Tommy Mellett being jacked. Uh, you could try to keep selling on me that... that wait, he, wait, wait, uh, wait, wait. Hey, By the way, can I address I that first, for a yeah, yeah, yeah. quick, quick second? Yeah. Uh, 
one of the R and R cast guys um, uh, commented that picture of of Mellet. Uh, you know, not he's trying to claim that he's not Jack. I mean, I'm not trying to go like knock the kid, but like that's not really the best picture. If we're going for proof, it's that he's not, but not. He's big. also a freshman, so you're like, he's okay, nineteen. He doesn't look need at his to be face. Big. <laughs> look at his face. You can tell he's not that grown man quarterback yet, no. which is even more impressive. So if I'm, if it sounds like I'm knocking, I hope it doesn't come off that way. But we're in a different situation here. It's it. We're right. in a different ball game. You know, I just think uh, the definition of jacked is a little bit off. He's a, I said he had he, he didn't have pipes. Not a lot of quarterbacks do. But it was like I just we're talking about his uh, um, durability, and Joe he's kind of made it this far. So and I'm sitting here like maybe he can make it another game. Maybe he really can, and he needs to because they are rolling with him. They have momentum with him, and he is. I mean, Joe he's got 740 yards on the season so far and 10 touchdowns, and he's only played a couple games. <laughs> it's saying games played 11, but with substantial. You know what I'm talking about. You know it's uh-huh. it's it's different, but that that is um that is a sub- substantial numbers there as many touchdowns as a Fonzie on the year. Uh, so you're like, wow, this guy is kind of rolling, and he just needs to stay durable. So I, I had to clear that out and say it's a matter of durability if I'm judging a player's physique. <laughs> yeah, again, I thought that that was a very just strange tidbit. Uh, and no no disrespect to Ryan, who was the one who uh, who commented that. I just thought that was funny because. Again, there's more massive quarterbacks out there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why that was what was picked apart. Um, no, but Mellet, as we know, very, very talented rusher. And that is what is going to to keep this, this Montana State team alive in this football game. And I talked a little bit about on the last show that we did. If Montana State loses this football game, it is going to be because Mellet is limited and asked to throw the ball more than he's capable of doing just because he's he's very green at throwing the football he doesn't have a lot of experience and we saw him struggle a little bit in some of those third and long situations if he has the ability to scramble and buy some time that always helps him um but if he can run and get into a rhythm along with afonze and get that that run game going it's it's a very hard team to stop South Dakota State almost did it at the beginning of last game, and then as soon as he started to get rolling, that's what they helped them take off. Joe, I don't think they're going to be asked to throw the ball very much. I'm looking at their their totals for the year so far. I mean, they are not – they all year they haven't been doing it. They're averaging 181 yards a game. Opponents are averaging 188, and we know that the running, running the game – the running game is the bread and butter for Montana State. But still, you're looking at it like like – Wow, they are really not slinging it, but they're effective at it. They have 23 passing touchdowns, and they've only given up 12. So it's going to be it's going to be a lot of pressure on that North Dakota State offense to crack that trend that has developed through the year with such a stingy defense. That is, mm-hmm. I mean, you're giving up seven more yards per game passing, and you're not even a passing team like that. So that means all three phases of that defense for Montana State doing their job, especially when you have an offense where it's it's not one-dimensional, but it's a pretty one-dimensional offense. You know what you're going to get. you got to stack the box. you got to stop the run. So it's an impressive team on both sides like that, but I don't think he's going to be asked to, to throw the ball so much because why would they change it up in the national championship game? Well, I, <clears throat> sorry, I don't know. I just <clears throat> completely got attacked by something in my throat. Um it, it, they might, have, might not really have much of a choice, though. We're talking about a North Dakota State team that has proven the ability to completely eradicate an opposing team's strength. Like, a perfect example is what happened against ETSU. Quay Holmes was taken completely out of the game. He was he was gone. He was non-existent in that football game, and they dominated them. Uh, against JMU, Cole Johnson, who in this latter stretch has been relatively mistake-free. You know what they did? They forced Cole Johnson to make mistakes and turn the football over. And if a veteran sixth-year guy like Cole Johnson is going to make those mistakes in a big, important game, I would be a little bit worried. And that, to me, is the is the big weakness here. If we're talking about a weakness for this team, is Ken Mellett, if he's asked to throw because they do such an effective job of preventing him from running the football, is he going to be able to step up in those circumstances? And I don't know if we really have enough of a sample size against a defense like this to say with absolute certainty that he can. 
Yeah, it's a very small sample size. Uh, 26 for 50 passing so far on the year. Uh, 461 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions, passer rating of 155.85. And you're like, okay, well, that's hmm, it's not a lot to go off of. But he's not turning it over. And I think also because he's such a good running quarterback that we we over get overshadowed by the fact that he's still a quarterback. He can still throw it. And that's the, it, it happens. Don't even every don't even think what I'm about to say is what I'm saying. Don't even think about it. But we see Lamar Jackson, right? Mm -hmm. fantastic running quarterback. People are angry because he's not just running it all the time, but he can also throw the ball. He can do it. He is an effective passer. When it gets in the fourth quarter, he's effective. He can win it there. First three quarters, eh, I don't know about you, but, but if you have that dual threat like that, and one trait is obviously better than the other, then we tend to diminish that secondary trait opposed to just saying, okay, he's better at rushing, but that doesn't mean he's a bad passer. That's a weird, that's a weird bit that people and analysts and fans get on is that, okay, just because it, and there's examples, Michael Vick was not a good NFL passer, but he was a good, he was an elite uh, runner, but I'm not seeing enough from him to say, okay, he can't throw the ball with Mellet. Yeah, they're, they're perfectly capable of doing it, but I think that that is certainly something that, that we're going to need to be aware of because of how good North Dakota State's defense is, and we're going to end up talking about that that North Dakota State defense. But speaking of Montana State's defense, we know that it is led by the elite athlete that is Troy Anderson, the man who's played quarterback, he's played running back, he's done so many different things, and he has been so dominant in this recent stretch. We saw him smacking dudes and coming downhill against South Dakota State. But you also have to acknowledge some of the other guys in that group. I, I think it's it's easy to overlook the fact that they have a guy on the year in Daniel Hardy. I was about one to their, say. One of their defensive ends who, and I didn't know this was his stat line. I knew the dude was good, but I didn't know that he had 16 sacks and 23 tackles for loss. And that's not just the best guy in the group. They've got a couple guys that are over 10 tackles for loss, like Amandre Williams, and then additionally. Eight and a half sacks for him. Yeah, and additionally, Troy Anderson um, has 14 on the year, but that is a really, really good defensive team. And one thing that stands out to me is that they are downhill. They are a team that will stifle you at the line of scrimmage. They are not going to allow easy pr progression past the line of scrimmage. So despite the fact that North Dakota State runs the ball so well and they have so many different people that they can get the ball to, it is not going to be an easy outing for them to run the ball. It is going to be one at the line of scrimmage. I know it's something that we talk about a lot, but all the time. Broken this is record two, show. Two Midwestern teams <laughs> that run the freaking football. Like this is going to be dudes smacking dudes at the line of scrimmage. With so many teams, sometimes we kind of get bogged down with the defensive uh, side of things and how, um, you know, when you're doing a Madden franchise and you're kind of checking out your offensive players all year and seeing how their stats are doing. And at the end, you do that big wrap up for defense and see, oh, how did everyone turn out? Um, that's kind of what it's like now where you're seeing Montana state has 42 sacks on the year. They've only given up 20. That is stunning to be doing that, to double, to double that, 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 that's praise for the offensive line for Montana state. Maybe it's the mobile quarterback situation and, and their offense, how they kind of get it out a little quicker, not a ton of long developing plays and they run the ball a lot, less passing options. I get it. 40, 42 sacks is a big damn number. That's a big number. I, I, I were we ever over uh, 20 in a season? Were we ever over 25 at URI? Mm -mm, no, no. God, I don't that is a so. massive number. That's how many games have we played now? Uh, 13? 14? 13 regular? No, 12 regular? Just, I saying, have no for idea. the full season so oh. far, I'll, I'll just say we're sitting at 14. Well, you mean teams in general after happen. the playoffs? Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. we're closer to 16. Are we in 16? I, God. 15, I, I have no idea. The worst Matt show that hurt. could be putting out that we could be putting out. Anywhere. We're not good at we're not good at math. Uh, we've okay, been twelve and two. We're going into game fifteen. Okay, there all we right. Go. So fourteen. Okay, so I was right, and I I, I, I lost confidence in myself, dude. That's like all right. Let's do some quick math. Twenty eight plus. Please, no more I, math. Yeah, no, 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 no that's more like, math. That's three sacks a game. I think averaging. I think forty two times three is fourteen. This Wait. show sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but averaging, it's three sacks a game. Yeah, that's a big exactly. deal. That's stopping three whole possessions. I mean, sacks are so lucrative because they disrupt 
everything an offense is trying to do. Tackles for losses happen, but tackles for losses don't normally go for minus eight yards. Sacks are don't really average, and you're sitting there uh, losing six, losing seven. And that is a drive killer. If you can do that three times a game, you're plus three sitting there. Especially uh, take that down, you're plus one, you're plus two, giving up sacks on your own side. So it, it it's an impressive defense. They swarm and they will get after the quarterback. And Troy Anderson deserves all the praise, but there are other dudes on this defense that make an impact that also make it uh, able uh, for him to do that. Yeah, there is a. this is a very, very good defensive team, very, very good rushing team, and we're probably going to echo the same sentiments when we're talking about North Dakota State. Sean, if, if we had to make a prediction, not like a score prediction or anything, but if we were to anticipate how we think that Montana State is going to do in this game, how would you predict that they're going to play? I think they're going to play like they have the whole year, which is just gritty, just just blue collar football, just mean as hell, not wearing sleeves in December, not doing this and that. You know, they're playing neck roll football and they're not all wearing neck rolls. I get it, but <laughs> it, it's good quality football. It's not too flashy. It's a grind you down team. That's what you do. That's what they do. It will you will go into them and you will play them uh, in the game. And afterwards, you will know that you have played a game. Win or lose, you're sitting there on that bus saying, oh, God. <laughs> Can't wait Jeez, to get bro. back. <laughs> are, we, are we, coach, are we going in tomorrow? Can we can we get a breather? We, you know, you're sitting there just aching in those bus seats. Oh, those plane seats are even worse. Um, but you know that you played a game with them. You know that you've been in a fight, win or lose. Uh, and it's going to be a tough, tough game to predict win-wise, but you can expect a lot of fight, especially I think when people, when teams are playing North Dakota State, they want to be one of those teams that did it. They want to be one of those teams that said, yeah, we took them down in the national championship. We got our ring. We're taking it back to Montana, and we're just going to just be flashing it all over the place. So it, it, it's it's a big deal to win that North, uh, national championship, but to beat North Dakota State as well. That's a pretty big accomplishment also. I think that's why Philly was so amped up when they beat New England in the Super Bowl. Well, they were punching police horses and stuff in the in the, in the streets. Uh, it's just, you know, <laughs> it couldn't believe it because it was a double win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree with that, the gritty nature of the game. I think that, that this is an aggressive team. Of course you do. Not, it was a good point. I'm not going to shy away from that, but this is how I see this game playing out from Montana's perspective, uh, Montana, Montana State. State's perspective. I see that this being a low-scoring affair. I think that oh, they have – wait, 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 wait. I, I believe that defensively they are built to not completely eliminate North Dakota State's rushing attack, but limit it. Maybe to the level that we saw it was limited when North Dakota State played South Dakota State. And we saw what Montana State did against South Dakota State. There were some big runs that were ripped off, and there were some first downs picked up on some of those rushing plays – but they didn't allow South Dakota State to take over the game by running the ball on the ground. And they forced them to throw the ball more later on in the game than they're typically used to. They're usually, South Dakota State has been a team that is capable of kind of just grinding the game out and then pulling away because of how good their run game is. I, I again, see them matching up well with this North Dakota State team defensively. But I am going to echo the legitimate concern that I have for Mellet going against this uh this North Dakota State defense. The fact that they were able to seriously impact the performance of Cole Johnson, who received votes for the Walter Payton, who in this final stretch of games was a, uh, a big reason why they were so successful in the final stretch and, and why we thought that they were capable of beating North Dakota State. And they I was so surprised by how poorly he played and the fact that North Dakota State almost pretty handedly beat James Madison. I can't 100% buy in. I think if they win, it's going to be because Mellet has a crazy rushing performance. I can't have outdoor. you say wait. that. I can't have you say can he's say going to be the winner. I can't have no, wait. that. I, I'm saying if I they win, saying, if I they win. Have, you can't do that. You can't I am, say, hey, Mr. I'm referee, illustrating my point. I know we're going into overtime. I'd like to choose heads and tails. That's what I would like to choose. No, I'm illustrating my point. If they win, it's going to be because Mellet has a huge rushing performance, but I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, it's you, not likely. You, you should never gamble because you just hedge every bet. You just I'm hedge not hedging. It all. That's I'm not hedging. hedging. You're That's trying to be hedging. America's sweetheart right now. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to say I oh, just I, was I just bashed him. I just no, bashed no, Montana no, State. No, you did not. I just you 100 are trying to be America's sweetheart, and you're trying to say you know, you oh, know my take. If he decides to really show up 
Hey, you, you know, know what, you know what my take is. You, you know what my take is. You are just you know trying to be Mr. Nice Guy FCS. Let Sean screw, take all this. The, the, screw the you. You know what? Oh, you, oh you, it's gonna be a gritty like, game. They're gonna come out and be gritty. Like that's not picking us. You didn't pick a side. How was that supposed to pick a you, side? It's gonna be a, a damn dog fight. It's gonna be a dog fight. But North Dakota State has the defensive advantage and the capability. How would you say they have the defensive advantage over this Montana State team? I don't think that Tommy Mellett is going to be able to step up in this situation. Thank you. He that's is, all you had exactly. to say. That's what that's I said. I, you know what? No, that's what that's I needed what to get I out said. of you. I needed to get it out of you because you're a liar. You're saying, oh, you know, if they win, it's going to be because of him. But I don't believe in him. So I can play both sides. I'm Joe right, DeLeon. I'm not playing I'm gonna, both sides. No, I'm that's not, who you are. Right, I'm, I'm I know you, Joe. I know my, you. I'm, this is I my, know you. Let me freaking talk. This is my stance. Tommy Mellett, I don't think he's going to step up. If Cole Johnson can't get the job done, I'm sorry, Tommy. You can't do it either. Cole Johnson Someone, can't run. He he was still thrown for like six touchdowns, five touchdowns. Sure. Okay. Okay. Continue. They have the forced point. They have forced some of the some of the most talented players in the FCS to struggle and make mistakes in avenues of their game. That is their strength. I have a new. I hate you, dude. You suck so much. It's not even funny that you. I can't Eat believe shit. you tried to do that. I can't believe you got caught. I knew it, it was wasn't. Catch there's you. nothing you, I tried to do. You got I, caught. All I was trying to state was that if I don't think that he's going to, but if they win the game, it is going to be on the legs of Mellet, and he's going to outplay my expectations. That was all I was saying. You can't just let me have a take. No, no, you can't just not, let me that, have that, a take. That's not real. That's not real. And I had to, I had to prod you to get. All right, it. fine. What is your take? My take: Montana State's going to play hard. Okay. All right. I, well. I, I literally had the take about they're going to beat the hell out of whatever team they're playing. Like they've been you, doing all you, year. Do you believe win in or lose? Do you believe in Mellet? <laughs> Malot, Malot. I think he runs really hard. I think he runs too hard for a quarterback. I, I that's something that I have voiced. But I believe mm-hmm. that if you got a game. Why not run them? You know, you, we're going for the triple crown here, Secretariat. If your if your heart blows out, it blows out. But we're gonna Ooh. you're gonna play hard. That's a rough. Well, take that's, what you, it's his choice. <laughs> it's his choice to, to run that hard, and he does, which I appreciate because he's run with with some spirit. All right, I think that's a good note to. Oh yeah, let's get let's get you out of the barrel quickly. Go ahead, let's wrap it that's up. A good no, no, it's a good note to wrap us up on. We're gonna transition to talking about North Dakota State. I I think these are gonna both be released one right after the other. So if you want to check out the North Dakota State preview, that is going to be coming to you soon. Uh, be sure to hit subscribe at Joe DeLeon, at Sanderson Radio. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube if you're tuning in there. And then leave us a five-star review on your audio platforms if you are tuning in there. Enjoy the rest of your day, folks. It's almost Saturday. <laughs>